there was a lot of a masculine figure around me and and a lot of the time I felt as if I had to to be maybe that way growing up and I quickly learned that the, the best way out of that was to embrace whatever I am I think it's a psychological thriller that involves all of those elements. It's definitely got a queer text. It's set in a sort of Western environment, but a Western environment that's rapidly changing. It's 1925. It's it's not the era of Ford and Wayne, for example. It's... Hold it! It is a grand movie in the way that it's shot and the way that it looks, but it is a very deeply intimate psychological drama. For some people that would, you know, see the imagery of it and the landscape and, and you know, the costumes, they would say that it was a Western. But if any Anything, what I take from it is that it, it can be somewhat of a psychological thriller in a way, like it can keep you on the edge of your seat. I think it's a Jane Campion movie. That's what makes her an auteur of our time is that she very much has a way of making films that's just unique to her. I think she's having a good, long, deep think and look at them, uh, as we did in preparation for this complex character. I don't think she's being prescriptive about male behavior, she's examining the individual circumstance and well, it's very much an examination of toxic masculinity and how it comes about rather than uh, a sort of celebration of it. This is her uh, examining why the bad behavior of men, in this case Phil's sort of treatment of Rose and his gaslighting of her. And, why that tormentor is tormenting, to look behind or underneath the hood of the engine, so to speak, to try and figure out the workings of this guy, to understand it rather than just judge it. Phil, he's someone who's in a lot of pain. He can't be who he really wants to be. So I think when you're not allowed to express yourself, bad personality traits are kind of magnified. What's it doing? getting mixed up with her. In terms of Rose and the way she's relating to men, it's a pretty old-fashioned thing that, that Rose is going through. She doesn't talk to her husband about what ha what's happening between her and his brother, and she's being so polite, you know? Well, Brother Phil? What I take from it in how I related to my character Peter, not in terms of, of sexuality, but in terms of gender and how, dare I say the word, toxic masculinity can rule a lot of the topics and, and the things today. In Australia, where I grew up in the country, there was a lot of a masculine figure around me. And, and a lot of the time I felt as if I had to, to be maybe that way growing up. And I quickly learned that the, the best way out of that and the most healthy way to continue to be myself was to embrace what I am. I feel he's an extremely delicate character. He's beautiful and poetical and gentle in many ways, but at, in that same breath, he has a darker side to him. He has a great strength and a great respect and unconditional love for his mother. How he holds that up, he, he does it in very strong ways, very shocking ways sometimes. The judgment of him is always changing and we don't really know him, I feel, until the very end. For my character, you know, I would say he, he fears a part of himself being revealed and before that can be revealed, he's very adept at um, kind of creating a, a mask of masculinity. But he is that guy, he is an alpha male. That is who he would be even if he was his authentic self. I think his temperament might be different if he was allowed to love, if he was allowed to be happy. So he's kind of a lonesome, tragic figure in my mind. I think he's so angry, so he punishes Rose for that. Rose, you know, can only handle so much and then she starts drinking and so just she's in her, her own cycle of feeling like she's living with a monster.